Hey YouTube, this is CFI Airsoft here doing a uh, demonstration video how to do Tiger Stripe. I've had several people ask me to do it. So I'm going to show you exactly what you need. I'm going to be demonstrating on my new uh, Emerson OpsCore bump helmet. It's an OpsCore replica, my bad. So what you're going to need is you're going to of course need the helmet. You can see I have disassembled it. I have taken the rails off. I have taken the night vision off. It takes a little bit of work, but it's fine. Just be careful. The Velcro is very, very clingy, and it will start to peel off. Actually, not the Velcro itself, but the adhesive will start peeling. You will need some kind of net. I chose a, a net from Walmart. This is a uh, dryer shoe bag. that I've clipped off the uh, retention system, so all it is is the netting. And you will need your spray paint. I'm going three colors here. I'm not going to add the light green. So I will start the demonstration here in a second. Alright, so as you can see, I've done one co uh, coat of OD green. Um, if you didn't notice before, I would highly recommend uh, getting some blue painter's tape or some kind of tape and plug in the holes. That way it prevents the paint from spraying in there and getting all your padding, because I couldn't take out all the padding. So I put that blue painter's tape on there to seal that up. And as you can see, my first coat, I, I did OD green. You can do tan, you can do brown. You can pretty much do any color you want. I'm just trying a different thing. I've always done tan undercoat. I am going to try my hand at a green undercoat with some tan and brown lightly on top. And just to see how it kind of comes out for a woodland pattern. So there's the first stage. And as you, I haven't touched the rails yet. I'm going to paint those here in a second. I'm actually going to leave those OD. You can paint them whatever color you want. You can tight or you can put you can actually leave them on the helmet if you want them all snake skin in. I'm leaving them off to kind of add a little bit to kind of bring out more green is what I'm hoping to do. So like I said, I'll keep continuing as kind of keep, do a bit by bit video all on right. this. So I got my helmet all prepped. I have my net around it. I'll show you how I secured that. I took a, some paracord here and did like I made a tension thing to hold it together. And then I took paper clips and like safety pins and just kind of pinned it all around the helmet like, a, like it would be a cover. So then you might notice it kind of bunches up, that's fine. Um, that kind of just adds a little character to it if you ask me. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as you get the majority of the helmet looking. And then now I'm just going to kind of dust it with some tans and browns and hopefully it turns out amazing. So I'll do a post uh, picture video for you guys after this one. So as you can see here, the final product. Um, I think it turned out really well. Let I me mean, know what you guys think. I'm not sure. I guess I'm using my GoPro, so filming this is kind of difficult, and the video might not turn out well. So, sorry about that if there's poor quality in some spots. But like I said, that's the uh, final product. I think it turned out pretty well for a woodland design. Um, I've done this on my other Mitch 2000 replica, and I really like this because what it blends in like is it blends in like a log. It's not going to blend in like woodland, it's going to blend in, like I said, like a log or something like that. So if you're playing in woodland, I would try to replicate this kind of pattern. All I used was khaki brown and OD green. My other helmet, I did a tan undercoat with brown, OD green, and then a light forest green. It's not that gray green, it's a really limish looking green. You'll see it on my Mark 17. But um, So I hope you guys enjoyed.